All right, next up we have Michael Hackstein. He's a JavaScript developer at ArangoDB. Good evening. Um, I hope this works in a second. Yeah, so my talk will be about an introduction to the multimodal NoSQL databases. Um, and I will start it with a short introduction to the other NoSQL databases that are out there. So document stores, you might know it's MongoDB. You're using that with Meteor every day. Um, but there are also other things like graph databases. You might know Neo4j which can store relations between objects that you store and query along these relations really, really fast. And another thing is key value stores, which are rather simple and can just store opaque values to keys, but they are really fast and easily scalable. And these are the three major players in the NoSQL world. Now, let's bring some use cases to them. For a document store, we could, for example, store products and users. They are really well fit for that. In a graph store, we can store recommendations, because there we have to connect the people that buy things and the things we have. Um, and a key value store is really good for shopping carts, because we only want to access that by the session ID. And probably you guess where this goes to. We're building an e-commerce system. And to build an e-commerce system, and we want to use polyglot persistence, that means we use the best database for the job. We need three different kinds of databases to use this. <coughs> And now comes the idea of a multimodal database. A multimodal database does not separate these data models, but it puts them all together into one technology and allows you to actually store JSON documents, key value pairs, and interconnect everything together in a graph. And that means for an e-commerce system, we can just use one multimodal database to use it as the back end. <coughs> so what are the requirements for the database in this special case? A database has to be able to perform joins. It has to be able to perform asset transactions, because otherwise you would be in trouble with graphs. In a graph, if you delete a vertex, you have to delete all the edges as well. If that is only done with eventual consistency, we are getting into trouble. <coughs> and also, you need a uniform query language on top of that that combines all these worlds. Now let's uh, give you some example for this query language. Um, a rather simple one. We're just iterating over all the products and returning them. Um, maybe we want to use a second level um, index, and we want to filter them. So for example, we search only for yellow products, limit the result to 10. And now comes the cool part. We're adding graph features. So we now try starting from customer, name Alice, and go to the product that we have that, thus just searched, and then define a new object, which is a join, formed by the product and the distance we have just computed. Then we continue with document queries. We can sort everything by the distance between the product that we buy and the person. Now let me explain the distance. Distance, if Alice has bought something, it is distance one, because there's a direct relation. If a friend of Alice has bought something, it's distance two. Friend of friend, distance three, and so on. So if we are sorting it by distance, we will first find the things that Alice has bought, then the things friends has bought, friends of friends, and so on. So probably we do not want to buy the things that Alice owns already again. Therefore, we just use distance greater than one. <coughs> so what are the benefits if you're using a multi-model database compared to a single model database? You do not have a data model lock-in. That means if you start with a document store and suddenly you think, oh, um, I better need a graph database now, you're typically in trouble. With a multi-model database, you can just switch under the hood. That allows for more flexible queries and reduces the client-side implementations because you do not have to implement joins yourself. <coughs> and good benefit is you do not have to do data syncing on your application level. This is done by the database itself because it just has one data source underneath. And why am I telling you this? Because there's work in progress. RangoDB is working on an integration to Meteor to bring you all these benefits of multimodal databases in Meteor as well. And that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, does anyone have questions for Michael? All right, thank you. I oh, think there's oh, a question. Oh, there is a question. Uh, do you have something equivalent to Dropbox, or do you have a polling graph? Uh, we are having the um, write ahead log, similar to Postgres, and we are uh, working on it to expose it in some similar format or something comparable to the Oplog, so that we can integrate it into Meteor. Yeah. And can you repeat the question real quick for the Okay, question? so the, the question is if we have something like the MongoDB's Oplog already implemented, and the answer is we are working on something and we are having the right ahead log giving us all the, implement, um, the necessary toolkit that we need internally. Awesome. Any other questions?
Thank you very much. Thank you.